Welcome back my friends to Marvel Snap. We got a brand new balance update. Are your old decks still playable? How can you adapt them? Is there anything new that is going to rise to the top of the meta? Let's break it all down. These changes are coming alongside a brand new store event, the Nexus Events, a way to kind of directly purchase specific cards, which is something that was sorely lacking from Marvel Snap, and also a complete overhaul to the progression system at the higher tiers of collection level. If you're interested in those changes as well, there's a separate video for those. Right now, let's dive into some of these card changes. We have a set of the cards that got touched up here. We'll talk about these guys, and then we're going to go back to the patch notes to be able to see if we missed anything. Ebony Maw used to be 1.6, now 1.7, just a little bit more desirable. They made the carrot a little sweet or a little juicier um, to see if they're going to get players to play around this frankly debilitating ongoing ability. He's a brick in the hand after turn three and once you lay him down you cannot play any other cards to that location. Now I don't think that the change of up to 1-7 is enough to make him very popular. I've seen him used in two different situations. You can either combo him with zero to turn the ability off or you can play him with a movement deck, which is able to get around the restriction of not being able to play directly to the location if Heimdall is just going to throw a bunch of reinforcements his way anyway. I don't think this is going to be a meta-changing update. He did need the love though, so this is bringing him into a slightly better place. Now we've got Okoye. Oh, Okoye. So she originally released as a 2-1 that gave plus two power to every card in deck, which the developers quickly realized was far and away better than your other two drops, way too swingy for matches. They wanted to keep her with her identity, but just change her, bringing her down to a 1-1, one, one, giving every other card in your deck plus one power. And now they realize that that too was too strong because it was so easy to be able to work in playing her as a one drop. Now she is a 2-2 two, two, um, with her ability cut in half from what it was originally. I think this finally pulls her out of being plug and play in every single deck. It was already arguable on if she should be included into every single deck. Now, I think it's going to be a lot harder to be able to incorporate her. The decks that I still recommend using her in are if you are running a very finely tuned swarm deck. This way you can get that little bit of extra buff onto swarm before you start multiplying it. Similar to multiple man, human torch, I just thought of Deadpool, maybe Deadpool as well, but I'm not really seeing that version of the self-destruction deck do very well. So Okoye exists in a fringe case of decks now, and there are better slots, um, better cards to be able to substitute for her slot in your other deck. Scorpion, now 2-2 two, two, on reveal, afflict cards in your opponent's hand with minus one power. His ability is unchanged. He used to be a three cost, three power, and was basically half of a Nakia, which felt really bad. You might as well well, just play Nakia to buff yourself if your opponent is going to be buffing their entire hand. Interesting that Nakia has not been changed, uh, but Okoye was. I'm a little surprised that the developers letting Nakia slide for another balance patch. But now, Scorpion, at a two cost, is much easier to work into your decks. I highly recommend using him. I slotted him immediately into my Sarah Miracle deck and have been having a ton of fun with this. And oh man, especially if he can hit Iron Man which is a fairly popular card right now. He hits Iron Man very hard. Scarlet Witch going from a 1-2 to a 2-3 with an unchanged ability. She, very similar to Okoye, was running into every single deck at one cost. She had a very powerful ability to be able to get out of any very dangerous location for your particular deck. Now you have to pay a little bit more to be able to get that pivotal effect. I think she is still good. Um, she's going to be harder to fit into your decks for sure at the two cost instead of the one cost price point, but her ability is still very desirable, um, and I think that she is still going to be a very common card. Hulkbuster, oh man, this one is quite fun. So it used to be that Hulkbuster would add both cost and power to a card. Now, once merged with the card, he only adds power. Let me know down in the comments if you've had a revelation about how to be able to utilize this change on Hulkbuster. The main thing 
that is catching my eye is that with the beast combo decks where you're going to be able beast or falcon where you're going to be able to bounce cards back into hand now those cards are coming back with their buffed power but can be replayed at their original price point jubilee has gotten frankly an enormous change she used to be married to america chavez you would play jubilee you would all be almost guaranteed to play a 10 point america chavez right behind but now jubilee rather than playing your top card from the deck is playing a random random card from your deck. So her synergy with Chavez has gone down significantly. She's no longer the uh, 411 premium stat line that everybody wanted to just plug and play. She is still going to be good. She's still going to fit into the control decks that want to be able to fish for other cards. She's going to be able to fit into places that's trying to fish for the infinite. She's going to be able to fit in Mr. Negative decks that are trying to pull their inverted cards out and get more of those cards onto the board. So she's still going to have her place, um, but the uh, Jubilee Chavez shenanigans are over with. And here, Strong Guy, 4-4 four, four with his same ability. So once you trigger it, going up to a 4-10, an excellent stat line. He used to be a 2-3, <laughs> which meant that he would become a 2-9, an incredibly efficient play. That's been toned down significantly here. He is still good. I think he is still playable. It, but they wanted him, they said explicitly in the patch notes, that they want him to be a more build-around card. You need to commit a little bit more to try and trigger his ability, otherwise you're going to be quite sad. At 4-4, it's very sad if you don't trigger the ability. At 2-3, you weren't necessarily even sad if you missed the ability, but now much harder to plug and play into a number of different decks. He was getting worked into Kazoo and absolutely everything, because all you had to do was play Strong Guy and Lady Sif or Hell Cow, and you would be able to trigger him for a 2-9. I'm quite frankly still playing him in my Sarah Miracle deck and happy about it, but he's going to work his way out of a number of other decks. Uh, finally, it was not actually final. There's a couple other cards we're going to talk about, but Chavez, 6-9 instead of 6-10. This is a very minor tone down for her. She was fitting into a ton of different decks, reason being that you get her fairly early in your collection progress, and there's a lot of deck archetypes that don't have a pool 1 or pool 2 high cost high synergy card and then she was becoming the de facto finisher for all of those decks giving you a guaranteed 10 point play on the final turn not potentially clogging up your hand in the early turn so you can hit your other combos more reliably she still accomplishes all of those things obviously she also had the extra synergy with the jubilee before which is now gone um, but she still accomplishes being a good finisher for players with smaller collections but now the goal of the developers is that as you get your more specialized four and uh, um, four, five, and six cost cards, you're going to try and edge out Chavez from being played. All right, we only missed a few cards here to touch on. Crossbones for eight. You can only play this at locations where you are winning. This is only a text clarification to be able to deal with a fringe misunderstanding or misleading part of his text before with bar with no name. Uh, very unimportant. Crossbones, still a bad card. Ghost Rider, fairly significant nerf. Instead of three, three, coming up to four, three. Increasing his cost for a card is a big deal. Um, he's still going to be played. His deck is still going to be very good. Right now, this brings him on parity with a Dracula who's trying to do a very similar thing. Um, Dracula at 4-0, but then taking on the power of a card that he discards, Ghost Rider here, being able to pull out the body of the card that was discarded and adding a little bit of extra um, power himself. He requires a little more of, he's a little more finicky, needing a couple pieces to be able to combo with, but is providing the extra body and the extra power himself. I think that this is bringing both of those cards onto parity and will potentially see more balance changes moving forward. The Ghost Rider combo is still disgustingly powerful, his deck will still be good. So, still strong, it's just trying to tone him down a little bit. I think the developers are going to be still watching what Ghost Rider is able to do. Kazar is coming down a notch from 4-5 to 4-4, so he's losing one point of power. This is just a very minor touch-up. I can understand them wanting to tone him down a little bit because he's available to players so early. They want players to be able to grow their collections beyond the starter cards, and Kazar was becoming a staple of a meta deck at a very early um, card collection level, and so I can understand why the developers are ready to go ahead and nerf him. I think he's still playable for those early decks. He still gives them the uh, the power that they need on their one drops to get a lot of tempo early. Um, 
I don't think that he really needed the nerf, but in the mindset of the developers trying to push people toward using the pool two, pool three cards, it makes sense there. While we are here, we should touch on Killmonger and Sandman available earlier on the collection level road. So now we're gonna be able to gain access to these cards earlier. I assume this is meaning that they're coming from pool three and moving into pool two. And if you're already deep into pool three, your next two cards are gonna be guaranteed to be these two guys, which is the case for me. I was not able to find them yet. The goal here is to give players early on countermeasures against the high tempo kazoo type deck. Um, I think that this is a great change, being able to get these counters out there, trying to keep the meta more wide open for players as soon as they enter the collection level, but it's not going to be very impactful for people who are already at infinity level and playing with more complex deck. Now to talk meta implications of this balance change. The main deck that has been nerfed here is the Kazoo deck, which is a little bit unfortunate because this was popular everywhere uh, because it was all pool one and pool two cards. So it was allowing newer players to be able to climb up alongside the players with more advanced collections and still do very well, which I guess the developers thought it was doing better than it should because it was everywhere. Okoye with the increase in cost I think should be taken out of the deck entirely replaced with either Yandu or Iceman something that's going to reach out and poke at your opponent those are all good um, plug and play style of cards so they fit in well in place of Koye's spot and now with strong guys cost being increased and Kazar's strength being decreased uh, it's hard to be able to figure out if you can still run both of these I think that you need to choose now if you want to have strong guy or Kazar if you're not going to run strong guy but still want a high efficiency two drop scorpion is now your man able to nerf that entire opponent's hand he can fit in very well but if you're cutting strong guy you can potentially swing the energy curve of the entire deck a little bit higher um, you're not concerned anymore with running your hand to zero every single game and that means that you can fit in some common counter cards like Shang-Chi is very powerful. Also something like Hobgoblin to sail over to your opponent's side of the board and really mess with their plans can be good there as well. If you're going to cut Kazar then I recommend still Shang-Chi is an excellent option for your consideration. Also Namor and Warpath are very efficient cards early on in the game especially if you're careful about how you set up your attack attack lanes, um, which is kind of what this deck is all about. Now for the decks that wanted to be able to score Jubilee Chavez, and especially ones that were using them as their own two card unit without many synergies to the rest of what was going on in the deck here with my Dracula deck, I think it's going to be largely unchanged. But for a deck that had Jubilee Chavez hanging out on their own, now that Chavez is nerfed, Jubilee's synergy with her is nerfed as well, I think you're going to want to replace them. And the most logical cards that are plug and play for pretty much any deck and can fit in two card spaces is going to be control cards. So bringing in Cosmo, bringing in Shang-Chi, if you have access, Spider-Man, these are the kinds of cards that you're going to want to look to to fill those gaps um, until you collect a larger set of your pool three cards that then start to synergize with the rest of what you have going on with your deck. All right, now let's talk meta predictions for the rest of the season. What should you be playing to be able to climb up on ladder in the current balance patch? Well, a lot of the top decks got hit, I think largely similarly with the balance changes. Okoye and Strong Guy, people are gonna start looking for substitutes here. They can fairly easily slot in Scorpion if they like that or some other effective plug and play one and two drop the Jubilee, America Chavez, Ghost Rider getting toned down. I don't think that their pecking order between each other is necessarily going to change very much or that any one deck has been completely murdered. But what is fun to think about is the decks that did not receive any changes, and most of the changes were nerfs. So now these decks that had been on the fringe of the meta are going to be able to come into a little bit closer parity with these other options. Death Wave and self-destruction in general is going to be hitting pretty well. Discard is also an incredibly good archetype. Dracula was not hit. Um, while his pal Ghost Rider was, so he's going to be looking very good. Also, anything utilizing the Collector is going to be very strong. He was already very strong prior to the balance changes. Now he's going to be rising up a little bit more in priority. And Beast and Falcon with the new interaction with Hulkbuster, maybe there's something there. I'm not sure if that's really going to help this deck out or not. Finally, Heimdall Movement, one of my favorite deck archetypes and... Honestly, I still agree with this, even though it was written as of the last balance patch. Oh man, 
Hopefully he's able to come up and still compete. I'm certainly going to test it out because I love playing some Heimdall matches, but I still think that he's going to be on the outer fringe of the meta. Let me know down in the comments what decks you guys are excited to try out with the new balance patch. Very excited to see what people are going to be trying to bring into the meta. And if you are interested in seeing the breakdown of the slew of other changes that came with this patch, the new Nexus events, is this worth you spending your money? Well, I have crunched the numbers. We're doing a designated video on that and also talking about the overhaul to the player progression system for higher collection levels. Oh, it is a lot of great changes that are coming. Stay tuned for that designated video. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, have a good one.